Greetings and welcome to Pinball Stories. Uh, these are stories behind the pinball machines, not just about the games, but about how they came to be, where they came from, and their provenance. Um, there's a lot that we can talk about about individual pinball games, but a lot of times some of the most interesting things are the stories of how we come across these games and how we find them and the adventures and the weird idiosyncrasies of previous owners and the scams and the great deals. You know, there's a lot of good stories. And if you talk to anybody who has a pinball machine, they're going to have pinball stories behind them too. So this is another one in this series that I've been doing where I've been talking about the stories behind the games and how they came to be and how I came to got, get them. And um, I've been doing a whole bunch of them. And uh, my girl's like, you know, you need to do this one on Flash. And I'm like, um, yeah, that, but that game's put away. She's like, it's a really good story, though. I've been listening to your stories, and this is a much better one. And I'm like, well, I figured I'd have to pull it out and set it up, you know, because that's kind of what I've been doing. But I thought, you know what? She's right. i got to tell the story, so I might as well tell it. And then this is... So I'll start with where the game is right now. This is where the game is. The game is tucked back in this room. Let me show you. I've got this room, and it's got pallet racking and it's got all kinds of stuff everywhere you see there's play fields and there's parts and there's there's games stuffed everywhere and um, sometimes I rent these games out for video shoots and stuff like that and um, but I, I'm really not a hoarder and I'm not a flipper I, I collect these and I like to play them and I like to put them out and share them with other people this particular game I packed away just because I rotated it out it was on location and it's, it's back there. Let me show you what the flashlight is. This is my old beat-up Flash Gordon. Look how, look how ratty it is. Look at that. Look at the, uh, look at that. I mean, it's got a, even a peak corner missing off of it. It's a beat-up old game, but I love it. It plays well. It, the play field looks pretty good. So let me tell you how I came about this, because it's a really interesting story. I love these 80 era Bally games. Um, there's just something about the artwork on them. And if I, I can flip around here and show you, I'm working on a uh, vector right there. And next to it is a supersonic. Um, and I just, I love the artwork. I love the kind of feel and how colorful and experimental they were with these era games. And Flash Gordon is a lot like Vector. It's got that multi-level play field with all kinds of interesting things going on with it. And, uh, you know, it had speech and... and the flashes and everything is a really really cool game and it lo just looks gorgeous and it's got that sci-fi theme so I've been looking for one for a long time so one shows up on Craigslist and um, I, uh, I, I you know it was in some small town not far away from me so I called the guy and I said I'd love to come see it can I come and see it? he's like sure so I drive down there <clears throat> it was about maybe in like an I don't know almost an hour drive to get down there it was this tiny little town in um, in the south and you know it was one of these kind of poor sharecropper kind of towns where there was not a lot going on maybe it was an oil industry maybe it was an old farming thing but it was just you know kind of a kind of a kind of a poor bygone days kind of town and um i go down there and i, I find where this guy's place is and it turns out that he's a funeral director and his wife is a lawyer so i go down there and uh I get directions to his place of business, and it's a funeral parlor, and it's really an interesting, weird place. It's like a strip mall that had been converted into a funeral parlor. So it had, you know, it had glass windows uh, all up and down the building, and it had like Roman style columns. It, it, the strip mall had been redecorated when he took it over, I assume with a very kind of a Roman motif with columns and kind of ornate stuff. But it just, it was that kind of shabby, chic kind of thing where it was like the, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know how I would characterize it, but it was like a little bit kind of gaudy. And, um, and uh, the guy has all of these people dressed up like in these weird uniforms, these jumpsuits, like it, it almost seemed kind of like, there was a cast system in his work, you know? And um, he comes out and there's all these people, these little kind of, you know, his little underlings that are just doing, he drives up in his car and they're, they're, they're polishing the car and all this and the guy gets out and um, really, really charming, friendly, smooth talking dude, you know? And of course he's doing a million things. 
uh, he's got all this stuff going on. He's on the phone. There's people coming up to him. Blah 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 blah. And I mean, this is a this is a small little town, but you can tell he's doing his best to like come off being really quite important and very very busy. And uh, have a seat, and I'll be with you in a second. So I'm sitting there. I'm sitting in his office, um, and and there's you know there's all this stuff and. Uh, his wife is there. She's a lawyer. And she has her law practice at the other end. So there's like a funeral home on one end and a law office on the other end. It was really, really odd. Not very nice people, though. And so I'm sitting here waiting, and, uh, you know, eventually he gets around to, you know, calling me, and I come up, and he's like, okay, so you're interested in this pinball. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how, you know, young man, it's just talk, talking to me, and I'm like, can I just see the pinball? Let's see the pinball. I want to see the pinball. It's like, okay, okay. So me, in between all of this, he's like, hop in, uh, um, Hop in your car and follow me along. It's at this other location. But so um, while I'm sitting there waiting, the phone's ringing. And he's like, he, I can tell that like people are dying and they're calling the local funeral home. And they're like, you know, my, my mama died. What am I going to do? And, he, and, he, and I get to hear this pitch that he gives people when he calls them. You know, well, it'll cost you this much money for this. And if you want this and you want that, it'll cost you this much. And then we have the so-and-so package with the night, the, this night coffin of this thing. And then we've got this and then there's a service. And and then, you know, he gets off the phone and then the phone rings again and somebody else is in it. So he goes through the same pitch, but it's different. This pitch is different. It's like more upscale, I guess, depending upon who's calling, he gives them completely different kinds of options as far as, how to handle their loved ones, and and I, I'm just, you know, I'm suddenly fascinating listening to this. This guy is, you know, he's a good salesman, man. He's got it all down. So anyway, eventually, he hops in his car, and I, fo and I, I follow him, and we drive down into, like, an older, run-down part of town, and uh, there's this old building that clearly was some kind of an old speakeasy or a bar, probably in the 40s or 50s, and it's been run down, and we get into this neighborhood, and as we're driving along, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I like this area, man. This is getting more and more sketchy. It's getting more weird. It's like, you know, we left the area where people would have um, cars in their front yards. That was upscale. Now we're going down to where, you know, they don't have yards in their yards. It's like, it's just, it's weird. There's, uh, there's animals wandering all around. Everybody, there's trash everywhere. Um, and nobody, you know, people are just scurrying every now and then. Uh, it was just really weird, but it looked like kind of a war zone, you know? So we pull up to this place and we get out and he's just very nervously looking around like he hadn't been here in a while, which is making me nervous, you know? So he's like, hold on a minute, let me go, go. And he goes around the back of the building for some reason. So I'm like, what the hell just happened? He, you know, there's a front door there. He goes around the back of the building and I'm thinking, did, am I going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to get mugged any moment. This is what it is. Because, you know, he told me to bring cash, drives me out into this place. And I'm like, oh, this is it. This is it. For a Flash Gordon, I'm going to be killed. And uh, I'm waiting there for what seems like eternity. And then all of a sudden I hear something rumbling inside and then the front door opens. So he went in through the back and opened it, opens it in. We go in and it's just a, you know, big junk pile, dust and dirt everywhere. Things are torn over. It looked like there was an earthquake in the place. There's chairs strewn everywhere. Um, there's not really anything in there that looks like there's any value. And I'm like, well, where's the pinball machine? I don't see it. I thought it was here somewhere. And he's run, looking all around. And uh, did you hear that noise? And I, and he's like, what noise? What noise? And he runs around. And he's getting scared. So he's making me scared. And I'm like, oh, God, what is going on here? And then um, we... He, we, he goes into a side room and he's, ah, oh, here it is. So I look, go to the side room and there's the, the machine. And of course, there's no electricity in this building. This building doesn't look like it's had electricity in a decade. And I can't see anything. I, I, uh, I think I had a little flashlight, but I couldn't really see much of anything. And so I'm like, well, so here it is. What you think? You know, ah, he's like, I paid, I think I paid like $800, you know, something like that. You know, I'll give it to you for six. Uh, 650 you know and I'm like I'm like let me let me look at it I can't even see it you know and and then I start to look at it you know and I'm looking at the outside of this thing and I'm seeing the cabinet is just completely all screwed up I'm like well you got keys so we can see the inside uh, no I don't have any keys and he's just nervously looking around while he's saying this and I'm like is, is this even your game oh yeah it's my game it's my family's property oh, it's been here for a while so I'm looking at the outside and I can see, look and see how faded it is. That pink is supposed to be red. 
And um, the play field is all dirty and all that, but it's, I can see it's mostly there, but I can't see into the back box. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, this don't look anything like the, the I mean, the pictures he posted were very, I don't even know if he had pictures. Might, that might've been it. That might've been my first warning sign. So I'm like, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, I don't think this is, you know, we, I don't even know if there's any boards in there. I don't even know if the, the, it's complete. He's like, oh, it's complete. Who's working? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I, 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 how about 200 for it? You know, he's like, oh, no, can't do that. Uh, that's an insult, man. You know how much money I paid for this? And I, I'm like, he's like, I tell you what, I tell you what, just because I like you, $400, $400. And I'm like, no, you know, and this is a couple, this is a couple of years ago and I, I'd, I'd gotten burned on a few deals. So I was, you know, was getting cold feet and I was also kind of freaking out because I wanted to kind of get out of this place. And, um, he's scurrying around looking for, looking at other stuff and I'm looking at this and I can't see anything. I can't get, get a look inside the, the head or anything. And I'm thinking, this is really, I got a bad feeling about this, you know? And he's like, I was like, you know, I, th I think I'm going to pass on this, but I really appreciate you showing it to me. And then he's like. Oh, you know, you met my family. You did all this. You know, because um, I paid, I paid like eight hundred bucks for this. I paid a lot of money. I'm, I'm giving it away to you. Giving it away to you for four hundred. Giving it away. You know, and I'm like, and he's just, you know, and he just lays into me. And here I am in this weird place. I don't even know how to get out of here. So I say, all right, let's drag it out. Let's drag it out into light. Let me get a better look at it. If it looks like it's complete, I'll do the four hundred. And he's kind of grumbling, thinking, you know, I, I, did I say 400? I meant 500. 500 is what I'm talking about. 500 and it's yours. And I paid, I paid much more than that. And I'm like, you said 400. You know, so we drag it out. He's grumbling all the way. I'm looking at it in the light. And it, look, it's, it looks okay. There's a little bit of wear on the play field. But I still, you know, there's no keys or anything. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm looking inside. And it looks like it's okay. There's, you know, there's a lot of wear around the, uh, the out of the, out of the cabinet, but I'm like, okay, I'll do the 400. So he's like, you know, we loaded into my vehicle and um, he's just going on and on about what kind of deal he got, how I'm taking advantage of him, you know. Uh, I paid much more money than the, the, for this machine and, and, uh, and you know, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come through town, man. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna give me a drink or something, buy me a drink next time I come through because I want to see this game. I know it's an awesome game. You're going to love it. And, uh, you know, you got the better of me. You got the better of me. I'm like, oh, right, okay. So I loaded in my car, and I'm driving back. And the whole time I'm driving back, I'm thinking, man, this guy is a really good salesman. He did a number on me. He, uh, you know, I did not, I didn't really want to buy this thing. And I, I've learned, you know, sometimes you got to walk away from these games. And it's, it was in not, not all that great a shape. And, and the funny thing is, when I, after I restored this, Ed Robertson, uh, um, he's a friend, he's a collector. He was interested in this game. And, and I just, I, I, I thought about selling it to him, but I just thought, you know, Ed, Ed deserves a little bit nicer game than this. And I was almost embarrassed to sell this to somebody that's that much of a, a well-known person in the community because I don't want them going, yeah, I got that from Mike. <laughs> like, like, oh, no, because this is, this is a game, it, it, it's, it's beat up. It's beat up, but, it, you know, I, I like it. So I guess kind of held on to it, you know, because it's just one of those weird things. And I'm, I'm collecting this whole series of games if I could get them. So anyway, I get the game back to my house, drill the lock out, open it up. As expected, the MPU board is completely roached. It's got, you know, the batteries barfed all over it. But it looks okay. And so I start working on it. There's a series of videos where I work, do a lot of work on this, including... Um, touching up the play field, which I almost never do cosmetic stuff, but um, my girl, she did an amazing job, and it was actually, if you, if you should watch the video of, the, of getting all of that game working. So as I'm opening the game up, I look inside of the game, and what do I see but a check, like an uncashed check, and it's made out to him, no, it's made out from him to some woman. And it says $250, and in the memo section, it says pinball machine. It's literally the check that he wrote to buy this game. <laughs> and he paid $250 for it, and he sold it to me for $400. All the while telling me, you know, 
that uh, I was taking advantage of him. And uh, the you know, and I'm thinking, what is this check even doing here? And this is this is probably not a time when people could take pictures of their checks and deposit them with their phones. This is pre that. So this check means it probably was never even cashed. I don't know if he wrote it out to this lady and then he palmed it or she forgot it or what, but I think he wrote the check and then he, he probably never even paid it, but he ended up with the game. And uh, I, I saw that and I'm like, this guy. So I immediately get on the phone and I text him a picture of this check. And the phone instantly rings, and he's like, "Where you get that? What is that? What you do?" I'm like, "You see? Oh yeah, you told me you you paid this much for this month. You know, see you you know you you did a number." He's like, oh, "I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, that's uh, I, I I don't know. Maybe I forgot or something. I don't I, you know." And he starts backpedaling, and I'm like, "Yeah, all right, fine. Just remember, look, you're the one that's going to owe me a favor. <laughs> Next time we cross paths, you're buying me the drink." Um, and so. <laughs> That's the story of buying a game and actually finding out how much the guy originally paid for the game and that he lied to me about that. And, uh, you know, that was an interesting little adventure. So that's the story of the Flash Gordon that came with the price tag from its previous owner who lied about what he paid for it. So, you know, there's all kinds of people and, you know, when you're Picking up stuff like this, you could run into every kind, you know, and and uh, that was an interesting that was an interesting one. Uh, hopefully, I don't run into too many more of those. But I want to thank you guys for indulging me in hearing the story of the, my Flash Gordon, and uh, and I'll keep the stories coming if you like them. And thank you guys for all the nice comments and everything. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit PinballHelp.com. And until next time, thanks for watching.